yeah. What's going on, people? This is Hajimoto with another gauntlet hajification. We got ourselves a uh, issue that uh, almost every gauntlet owner has complained about. And if you remember when I first received the gauntlet, the very first thing that I said was how this shroud, where it touches the uh, barrel, was changing the point of impact and it was kind of weak. So, if you remember at that point in time, I did some photos. I had one out, outside, was doing some shooting, and I wanted to illustrate that when the gun is sitting on top of the shroud like this, you can see that the daylight is almost all but gone between, and it pushes up on the barrel. As you can see there, it's making contact. Now, since, <clears throat> since making the video, Umarek says that this screw, these two screws, one on each side, if they're too tight, it keeps it from uh, aligning properly. So you're supposed to loosen this stud, loosen these two, take the stud out, loosen these two, pull it off, snap it back in, everything lines up perfectly, then just lightly snug these, and then put this back in and don't super torque it. And it's supposed to keep the space. And if you look, that's me pushing it down and now letting it go. So you can see it's, it was clearly pushing up on the shroud here. One of the things that people said that they hated most about this weapon is that every time the barrel was nudged, the shroud would change the point of impact. And my resolve was I created a shim on the front side here temporarily to see if it would work to hold it down. Then what I did was 3D printed an insert that went inside here and it went underneath the tank and sat down into the bottom of this shroud and gave it support. It worked perfectly. But because we're talking about barrel support, I'm going to tell you one little thing that took place and it ended up biting me. And we're going to talk about that right now. It's the barrel band. Everyone has been talking about a barrel band, some way of supporting this shroud, uh, the barrel shroud, just like they do with the marauders and so forth. And so I came up with a concept and it's it's uh, it's my own design and uh, I'm going to share it with you now the design that I came up with is going to go over the tank and it'll support the barrel and what I did was took it a step further and put a Picatinny rail on the bottom and this is vitally important guys nothing is to be put on this like a bipod this is not made to support the rifle at all. This is for a flashlight or a laser. The reason for it is any movement now is instantly transferred to the barrel. So if you were to put a bipod on this, the minute you put it on it, the little bit of play in the tank is going to push the barrel up and you end up with a point of uh, impact change. So you do not want to put bipods on this. Remember, this is just for flashlights or lasers only. The unit itself slips over the tank and then supports the barrel. So let's go ahead and go through what you're going to do to install it. And the installation is going to require a hacksaw, some tape. If you have a bandsaw, that works too. But we're going to go ahead and go through the, the installation on it. And uh, I'll go step by step with you so that you can see it. I, I cut this shroud live, so there's no, there's no uh, trickery. This is live. And right here we're talking about, you can see the, the space that's fairly consistent between here. And the issue that we have is that isn't supported. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the shroud off and that, that's the play, see it? So, I mean, that's too boingy, so it needs to have some support. So what we're going to do is take the shroud off and <clears throat> by loosening the two screws, and taking off the swivel that's in the back and it'll slide right off. Now I use lead shot bags um, to support everything that I'm working on. Um, and you'll see that when I slide the um, shroud off, I'll prop it up on top of those and uh, simply make a mark at one half of an inch or 13 millimeters, whichever you choose. So on this front, the front edge of that shroud is where we're gonna be making a, making a change. So I'm gonna get the rifle, put it out of the way here. We're going to get ourselves something to measure with. And on 
that leading edge is what we're going to be measuring back a half of an inch or 13 millimeters and we're going to uh, cut that straight down as straight as we can it's not critical but you, you want it to look decent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, digital caliper set it to one half of an inch and then I'm going to scribe it across the front so that uh, I can use that as a reference so we'll go ahead and set this to half inch And then I'm just going to simply make a light mark across the front so that I can see it. And it may not show up in the video too well, but uh, for me, I can clearly see there's a very, very fine line going across to tell me that uh, that's uh, where I need to cut it. Now I take some blue painter's tape and I want to follow that line so that I'm parallel with the leading edge. You want to leave enough tape on the left and the right so that you can wrap around the corner and come down each side because you want to be able to um, follow that line straight around and down each side. So now I'm happy with this being symmetrical and now I'll take the tape and just run it along each side trying to keep the tape straight. Now I use two inch for a reason two inch tape is less likely to have curvature because it's so wide you can get a straight edge or a straighter edge with it if you use a thinner tape like half inch three eighths or even three quarter they're just not wide enough to keep straight and what we want to do is cut that edge off straight so I'll use my hacksaw I'm gonna be blocking the view here a bit and I'm going to speed this up because you'll, you'll still be able to see what I'm doing I'm just trying to cut across this to keep it straight. So again, this is probably 10 times the speed. And if you notice, I'm laying it on the left, laying it on the right to make sure that I'm keeping that line completely straight going all the way down. Then I'll use sanding blocks to get the edge uh, to be level. Files really are more aggressive and they do a better job for taking off bigger pieces of material. So I'll use some hand files here just to try to get that profile as straight as possible. Deburr all the edges, work the inside edges, and just clean this up a bit. All we're trying to do is get that edge to look presentable. We just don't want it to look hacked. There we go. Now this is the actual first piece. And I'm going to pause the video here because it's important that we talk about this. Because this was that goof that I was talking about. What I did in my very first design is I put a shoulder right here. And what that shoulder was for was to keep the shroud down so that it stayed even. Um, this ended up haunting me. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. This is the redesign. In the redesign, notice the shoulder's gone. I eliminated it. Because what was happening is, <clears throat> when this rifle was sitting on its bipod or in my hand or whatever, the shroud, because it was in the shoulder, the, sh the shoulder was transferring the movement directly to the barrel, changing the point of impact. So just literally setting it in my palm of my hand was forcing it up. So I had to take the shoulder off. While it was a good idea to hold the shroud down, um, it sucked and came around and, and it bit me uh, in the end. So, <clears throat> all right, so we've got uh, this all filed up. Those are the two pieces that we talked about, these guys, these are the design and the redesign. And then once we're done with that, we're going to then get the 3D printed piece that I had just showed you. We're gonna then introduce that to the, um, to the front. This is that part that I was talking about when I said the shroud would push up on the barrel. Because there's a little bit of movement in this tank, that means that when I had that shoulder, remember the shoulder came down and was sitting right here, that the minute anything pushed on this, this immediately pushed the barrel up. So it, it didn't work. So that's, uh, that's why I had to abandon it. All right, so now we've got our 
rifle back in front of us. We're going to go ahead and put the modified shroud that we cut one half of an inch or 13 millimeters off the front. And we're going to slide it in. Now watch how easy this slides together now. You see how straight everything is? See the gap? Perfect. Not over tightening these is the key. Now there's the piece. We're going to slide this over the barrel and bring it right over the tank. Now in this video, um, know that you're seeing the shouldered version. Uh, you, this is not what's going to be offered to you guys. Uh, the shoulder is going to be removed on the version that I'm, I'm offering to you guys. And uh, for the reasons that I've already explained. Right there is a perfect example. I'm going to pause it right here. You can see that if that shroud pushes up, it's immediately pushing the barrel. That can't happen. So we, I took this out of the way so you have that uh, about 3 sixteenths gap of movement before anything touches the barrel. Once it's slid over and it's lined up, you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you notice how I'm tapping it so that it's loose. You don't want to introduce any twisting to the barrel. So what you want to do is you want to sight your, your weapon in, get it a point of impact, shoot it at like 20 yards, get your sight of impact where it's good. Then when you put this piece on, you want to make sure that you're not, when you tighten this, you're not twisting it because if you twist it, you'll end up causing the point of aim to change. So you don't want to do that. So when you're tightening this, you have to be very, very careful not to, to twist it. Now I deliberately used as long a screwdriver as I could so that you guys could just see me fastening it and noticing that I'm not putting a bunch of pressure on this. Again, I'm trying not to get these two to twist because I would essentially force it to be shooting left or right and you could do that just by turning this. And there it is. If you notice, the entire rifle could be moved now and that gap never changes. So that's back in, good to go. Here's the finished piece. You see the finished piece comes underneath. You can put a flashlight on this guy. I've got my bipod, bipod back on again. The gap stays consistent. The barrel is now supported from the tank. This is a more front-on version. And you can see that it clamps onto the tank and it's holding the barrel, keeping the distance the way it's supposed to be. I do have uh, a couple of more videos that are going to be coming out for some of the air strippers and some of the other stuff I'm working on. But for right now, guys, it looks like that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, go ahead and look at the description of this video below. It'll have all of the information. Um, also, it'll have, if you want to order that piece, the PayPal information to order it. Thanks a lot for uh, watching my video, guys. And uh, if you haven't seen any of these videos to the right, take a look. You might like them. Take it easy.